Hello and welcome to Talk to Stu with me, Stuart Magoo. Hope everybody is doing well and thank you for joining me. Uh, in this video I will be talking about the increases to uh, all of the benefits payments which is happening very shortly, uh, the Easter payment dates which are happening right now because it's Easter, and uh, a little bit about the NHS app as well and also a little comment on the severe disability premium as well and the transitional element changes there but it is only a very little comment um, so yeah stick with me for that okay so what's happening well first of all uh, it's April is upon us and uh, we will be seeing increases for uh, most of the benefits uh, that people are receiving of 6.7%. So you should be receiving a letter, if you haven't received it already, telling you what your benefit increases will be and so how much you can expect to see. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to see that increase in April. This is the, the important point with it. It will advise you in your letter as to when this increase will be seen in your payments okay so if you happen to uh, receive your payment just uh, in the first sort of few days of April it might be that you don't see that increase then it won't come in until after and it could be different for people on universal credit depending on when their payment uh, assessment period is running so uh, as I say, you should be made aware of that soon. Now, if you are uh, on universal credit, then most likely that information will come to you in your um, universal credit online account. So do check that out. Obviously, you'll probably be checking your universal credit account quite regularly uh, anyway, and you should be getting email or text updates for when uh, new information, new letters or new entries into your journal are made. But if you're not getting that for some reason, just log into your account and check on it. For everyone else, you'll probably receive that information via post. I know that I certainly had my uh, PIP letter come through, I think, a couple of days ago. So assuming that the post is going through reasonably well, you should have had that letter already, or you'll get it in uh, it, it, at some point over the next week or so. Okay, so look out for those things. They'll be arriving with you very soon. So next thing is the Easter payment dates. Now, uh, we know whenever payment dates fall on a bank holiday, they tend to be moved forward. So uh, I'm recording this on Good Friday. So uh, if you uh, are expecting to have received a payment today, then most likely it will have gone through yesterday, which would be the 28th, as today is the 29th. The same also applies if you are expecting to receive your payment on Easter Monday. That should have also gone through uh, yesterday, the 28th. However, if you are expecting to receive a payment on Tuesday, that will go through as normal on the Tuesday. So don't panic if it's not uh, in your account. It will go through as normal. Okay, so that's basically it for the majority of benefits. There's slight variations with some of them, but, but for, the, for the majority of the ones that we cover in the Talk to Stu uh, videos, that's what you can expect. So why do I want to talk about the NHS app? Well, this could be a very, very useful tool for anybody who is applying for PIP or uh, is going through a PIP review or children's DLA or indeed for anybody doing a work capability assessment form, also known, known as a UC50, or having a review on their ESA. So, what's so good about the NHS app? Well, the NHS app, when it first came out, was a bit limited, but over uh, the course of time, it has become upgraded in various different ways, and there are more uh, functions and features inside the app. And the most important functional feature for me 
is that it links with your GP surgery and it allows you to access all the letters and reports uh, that have been uh, sent to your doctor or from your doctor at any point in time. So that is really helpful when collecting evidence together for this kind of thing. Uh, it also lists all of the appointments that you've had. So quite frequently we get when we're filling in the forms, we get the section where it says, uh, can you tell us when the last time you saw whichever health professional it was? So you'll be able to see the exact date of that. And if you're like me and have a bad memory, it might be that you can't remember the name of the professional that you saw either. So it's quite good to be able to, to go in and um, check and see the names of those people and even the hospital or department that you went to as well because sometimes I can I, I know that I can certainly be a bit vague over what I was doing yesterday let alone three weeks ago or six months ago so having that tool can be really very helpful to you now a few things to bear in mind when you're setting up the NHS app it's free to download uh, but don't be distracted because when you go on to your play account, the first thing that comes up uh, when you type in the details will not be the NHS app. It will be an advertisement for a, a pharmacy for you, something like that, which is prescriptions to your door. So that's not what you want. You need to look down on the list and you'll see the NHS app is the second or third one down. And once you've installed the app, you'll need to ID yourself. So you need to have uh, a form of photo ID, either a passport or a driving license to be able to access it. So for a lot of people that can be frustrating if you don't have that. So that's why I'm telling you now to save you the bother of downloading it when you don't have that form of ID already in place. But if you have got that ID or you're in the process of getting it, then it's something worth considering. So all you need to do is uh, you go into the app to the section where it asks you to ID and it will ask you to hold up uh, or take a photo of the piece of ID that you have and then it will ask to take a selfie style photo of you and you'll put it up and it does some sort of weird scan thing of your face um, which uh, just be careful if you are uh, the sort of person who might be uh, photosensitive epilepsy then it, that might trigger you because it does sort of flash all these colors for a minute but uh, other than that it takes a few seconds to do the thing to bear in mind however is it does take a few weeks for them to then confirm your identity so when I signed up for the app uh, my pharmacist had said to me use this to order your medication in future so I said great um, and I left it a week before I thought oh no I need to to do that and then when I put it in the uh, straight away I ran into a problem because it took about two weeks for me to to get my ID confirmed so I ended up having to phone them and reorder my prescription anyway so uh, so do bear that in mind it does can take up to a couple of weeks for for you to have your ID confirmed but once that's confirmed uh, you log back into the app uh, put the details of your doctor's surgery, GP surgery in there, probably in there already, you just need to, to link the two and then it will access all of your GP medical records, uh, any prescriptions that you've been given, any appointments that you've had, any letters to and from, as I say, and things like that. So it can be really, really helpful when uh, putting together those applications. Uh, the other good thing is all those um, letters and everything like that that are in there they're all downloadable so you'll be able to download those in pdf format uh, which will allow you to print it out so uh, like i say it's um, worth having a look at you can easily of course just you know pop over to uh, the internet uh, nhs website as you can see here this side yeah that side of the screen um, you can have a look and uh, as you can see it's available on both the App Store and the Google Play Store as well. So yeah, that's a really useful thing to know. So there we go, that's it from me. 
uh, for this week, month, whichever. Uh, all that remains is to wish you a happy Easter and also direct you towards my new frequently asked questions video which is about the severe disability premium. So I'll pop the video, it'll pop up at, when this finishes and you'll be able to click on it and go straight through to that video. But if you're unsure about the severe disability premium and you want to know whether that's something that applies to you or not, if you are uh, receiving um, personal independence payment or attendance allowance, for example, and you're also receiving universal credit or pension credit, then, uh, sorry, ESA or pension credit, not universal credit, uh, then it might be something that applies to you. So go and have a look at that, but also there's important information in there about the transitional element of the SDP because there's been some uh, rule changes around that. So you need to consider whether that might apply to you as well or not. So if you've moved over from ESA to universal credit, uh, universal credit doesn't have the SDP, the Severe Disability Premium, but that transitional element is applied, so you keep uh, receiving the same amount of money that you did. However, there have been some changes because some people were missing out on that uh, in certain conditionality. So it's worth having a look at that video as well. Okay, so everybody have a great Easter, or the best Easter you can at least, and uh, hopefully uh, with the weather will improve and it'll stop raining for five minutes and we can all start feeling a little bit better about things and a bit like winter is is on its way out so yes thanks for watching and see you again soon bye for now oh, i'm transitioning into the wrong thing this is the trouble with obs it doesn't quite work in uh the way that you want you think to yourself oh i'll set up hotkeys that'll do it no, it doesn't.